this is timber country, the evergreen timber of New Zealand's native bush, the Rimu and Matai, the Totara, Tawa, Kaikatea, Kauri and Miro. Timber found in only a few remote parts of the country a century after the white man came. A century of clearing the land for farms and felling for lumber. And still there are men at work. No longer pioneers clearing the land, but bushmen, tough as any pioneer, cutting timber for a country that is short of timber. Fast cutting power saws have speeded felling, but mechanization hasn't made the bushman's job any easier. For cross cutters like Dave Tate and Tom Wynyard, it's still hard and sometimes dangerous work. Bush work will always be hard work, even with power saws to do most of our cutting. But cross cutters like me and Tom can work faster, and we earn pretty good money these days. in teams in the bush, cross cutters to fill the trees and clean up the trunks, the breaker out to get them ready for hauling away. It's a good life in the open air. We wouldn't give you tuppence for a job in the city. But none of it's easy work. An axe gets heavy when it's swung all day, and this is good hard timber. The logs are dragged through the bush by heavy tractors, out to the loading skid, where the logging trucks load them up for town. The housing shortage has made timber number one priority. We build mostly in wood in New Zealand, and a good truckload can mean a new home for someone. A loaded truck pulls out, and an empty one takes its place. They're in and out from the skid all day. We've got to work fast to keep them full. last truckloads on its way. Leaving the bush, it passes our settlement, or our Kuro, it's called, after the bush we work in. Just six small houses set in a clearing. It's a lonely place, but it's a pretty good place after a hard day's work. At home, the women meet us. For them, it's a lonely life, and they too look forward to the end of the day. It's good to get home, sit down and get your heavy bush boots off, and forget work for a while. But can we forget it? Not always. The bush provides our fuel, plenty of it, and free. We're too far off the beaten track for electricity or gas. There's little to do at night. We're 30 miles from town and the neighbours are too close to visit often. We usually have a quiet evening with a book, or with the newspapers that come twice a week. Sometimes it's good to read what's happening in the outside world, sometimes it's not.
The day starts early at Oraukura. Half past six in the summer sees us off to work. The sun's already up, and we're not far behind. From down the road come Rex and Bill, two more of our team. The truck's already waiting to take us into the bush. There's a two mile drive into the bush to get us to work, but for our children, going to school's easier. It's just across the road. There are nine children of school age at Orakura, some Maori and some white, and the teacher brings four more from the next settlement seven miles away. Like all small country schools, one teacher looks after all ages and grades. And even in a bush school, our children get a good education. With the children settled for the morning, their mothers get on with the housework, chasing the dust the logging trucks spread. Washing if it's Monday, or a garden to be weeded. It's a pretty dull life, but if something happens to break the monotony, then the Bush Telegraph goes into action. his first day home, and already he's the star attraction. Of course, it's not often there's a bit of excitement like this. There are only six families here, but our remoteness makes quite an event of the arrival of the stores truck once a week. It gives the women another excuse to get together when the supplies are sorted in our backyard. We were the first family here when the settlement was built a year ago, and our house has become the village centre. Our kettle's always boiling on stores day. And after the sorting, there's time for a weekly gossip round the kitchen table. And what they talk about, we can only guess. And while the women enjoy their cup of tea, Crosscutter's job's not as simple as it looks. It's taken Tom and me years to learn all about it. To conserve the bush, we've got to pick our trees carefully and fell them so they don't damage any others on the way down. We judge which way they'll fall from the wind and from the hang of the branches up top. We take a sight in that direction from the base, and if the way is clear of obstructions, we mark for the scarf which will guide the tree just where we want it.
The scarf's a wide cut in the side the tree will fall and should decide the exact direction it goes. Around the other side, the main cut goes in. Trees like this are dangerous. Up top, it's well tangled with its neighbors. And when it goes, branches are liable to fly back our way. Sailors, we call them. We'll have to get out from under pretty fast when things start moving. That was a near thing. But it could still be serious if the power saw is damaged. If that's out of action, so are we. These branches may look small, but we've had several men knocked out by sailors like those. We're lucky. No damage this time. And Rex gets the log ready for the tractor. There's a lot of skill in his job, too. It's not easy work shaping the end of a big log for easier hauling and cutting an accurate D for the cable without any guide marks. Rex's natural skill and plenty of practice have made him one of the best competitive axemen in New Zealand. He competes regularly at axemen's carnivals, and he's won quite a lot of titles. And now it's over to Bill and his tractor to get the log to the loading skid. skid they're always busy and tractor drivers and truck drivers have to be ready to give the skiddy a hand to keep the logs moving. That's two near things in a day. Old time bushmen would expect a third and serious accident but the old superstitions are dying out. We haven't got the time for them. That's another truck full, and the logs are measured to work out the payments due. Our contract rate for felling and breaking out, a royalty to the Maoris who still own the land the trees grow on, and the truckies payment for hauling the logs to the sawmill. The road out was our road in. We built it ourselves as we always do when opening up new bush. Just another job a bushman has to know and know well. The road gets quite a pounding from a truckload of logs. On the main road now and halfway to town. Behind, Mount Narahoe marks the center of the North Island. There's a 3,000 foot saddle to be crossed and then a long run down to the mill in Tamaranui, our nearest town. In the distance, 8,000-foot Mount Egmont marks the west coast of the island. Tamaranui at last. Three hours to do 30 miles and two return trips a day. The logs will be dropped at the mill and then back for another load. It's only one hour's run when empty. The logging trucks are our only daily contact with the outside world, and the drivers never forget it. They often bring back news from town, and that's a signal to down tools for a few minutes. This will interest Rex. The Tamaranui Axman's Carnival. One of the summer competitions in every New Zealand town that's near some bush. Good prizes, too, and all for chopping through a block of wood. But you've got to chop hard and fast, for here you'll find some of the best axemen in the world competing for cash and trophies.
Result of the 15-inch New Zealand Championship. B. Old Whiter at first. D. Hoey for Tararu second. Rex Bork, Araukura third. An Axeman's Carnival is a day out for every Bushman's family for miles around. And also for people from the farms, the towns and the cities. The chopping's the main attraction, but as well as all the fun of the fair. underhand chopping title five years ago and today he's scratch man of the field giving a lot of time to some pretty good axemen from all over New Zealand and there's always the luck of the draw some blocks cut better than others though they're picked as carefully as possible Unplaced, and his last chance for a win is in the Ohonga 12 inch standing chop. Rex is on number two block in a field of 12 finalists, some of the best in the country. That's a pretty good reason for a celebration back at Oraukura. And the Charles Hardy Cup is filled with beer, the Bushman's favourite drink, for a toast to the winner. For these men and their families, the summer's nearly over. They've worked hard and had their fun too. Soon the rain and snow of winter will come to make life harder and their job more difficult. But whatever comes, they'll take it in their stride. For this is the life they've chosen. A hard life, a good life. Life in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> 